Hey guys, Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today I'm reacting to another episode of Grey's Anatomy. And you've seen a bunch of these from me before, which I thought were pretty good. There was one where I reacted to Mark Sloan getting a penile fracture. Ah! Oh my God, are you okay? No. One with a guy who stuck his penis into a bee's or hornet's nest. Did you put your penis in a hornet's nest? No. Maybe. Yes! Another one where a guy gets a penis transplant. Ryan, could you show everybody what we're here to do today? <sighs> and a woman gets a stem cell bladder transplant. Take your time, honey. I want to see this bladder you bent. Oh, look at that. So make sure you check those out and I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode as well. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Is it a big surprise? It's very big. Well, I need to use two hands. Two hands won't be enough. <sighs> Dr. Weber, does this, this bed go down at all? Brian, um, this is the urologist that I was talking to you about. Dr. Catherine Avery. Um, before you say anything, uh, no, these aren't basketballs in my pockets. And yes, I am very happy to see you. <laughs> So that is one large scrotum. And to be quite honest, we don't see these sorts of things in this size, the way they're showing it in Grey's Anatomy very often at all. But there's a lot of different things that can cause scrotal tissue to get enlarged. And I'll go through a few of them. One can be a hydrocele, which is when you develop a fluid filled sac around the testicle that can make it larger. Another can be a hernia, which is when you have a weakness in the abdominal muscles. And that can allow a piece of intestine or your bowels to fall into what's called the inguinal canal. And that can actually drop into the scrotum. So you can actually have small intestines intestine fall into the scrotum causing a hernia. Another thing that you can have, which is a little bit less common, is called hydradenitis. And that's when you have an inflammatory skin condition that can cause these lumps to form underneath the skin. And that can often happen in the groin and also extend to the scrotum. Lastly, what you can see is scrotal lymphedema. We see this much more commonly in people in tropical countries because they can get parasitic infections that cause this. But we do see it in the United States as well, most often caused due to radiation, a prior surgery that could disrupt the lymph nodes in that area, or it could be iatrogenic, meaning that we don't really know why it's happening. So let's find out what this guy has. I don't understand why you've let it get this bad before seeking treatment. He's using it as an excuse to avoid our tenure high school reunion. <laughs> Paula. I am not. Yes. It wasn't this bad before. I mean, I, I've seen other doctors who prescribe pills that never seem to work. Then a few months ago, everything sort of just blew up. He wouldn't even come if I hadn't dragged him. <laughs> I would have. When? <laughs> After the reunion. Brian, there's no need to fear. By the time we get finished with you, you'll be hitting that reunion with 98% less scrotum. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, so a lot of people actually delay seeing the urologist because they're embarrassed. And I see it all the time for things that involve patients' genitals. In fact, there was a story about a gentleman a few years ago, I think it was in 2018 or 2019, named Wesley Warren. And he was having insurance issues, also bounced from doctor to doctor, and was actually carrying around a 132 pound scrotum in his pants. And there was actually, a lot of media attention surrounding this and you could actually see him walking around with um, wearing like a, a sweatshirt around his scrotum and, and also just dealing with that for, I think it was five years before he finally got to a urologist who could help him, which is really, really sad because that's, I mean, five years living, that's gotta be so uncomfortable and so painful. They actually even made a documentary about it on TLC called The Man with the 10 Stone Testicles. And 10 stones is actually equivalent to 140 pounds. And so that's a lot of weight to be carrying in between your legs. I still don't understand what it is I'm looking at. Those are testicles, Dr. Kepner. <laughs> don't 
don't worry, sweetheart. They're not supposed to look like. So typically for something like this, a physical exam is very valuable and sometimes you'll do an ultrasound as well to make sure you can identify what exactly the cause of the problem is. If you think it's a lymphatic problem, some people will get specialized lymphatic drainage studies to assess where exactly the problem is where the lymph nodes are not draining. But most of the time, an examination as well as an ultrasound is what you get. You may get a CT scan, which is what they're showing here, to assess if this is a hernia or there's any other abdominal pathology that might be causing this. I can't see anything. You described them as so big a sheet couldn't cover them. I may have exaggerated. Okay, ladies, this isn't a sideshow. Gentlemen, step right up. So inappropriate. That's it? Okay. That's not okay. Oh, great. Karev's here. Here to make us all laugh with funny jokes about my hands on a man's parts. This isn't funny. That poor guy. I know. Can you imagine becoming so swollen that a surgeon needs to use a scalpel to dig out all that excess tissue until the testicles and cords hit the open air? I mean, who even knows what happened to his penis and all that mess? It's not okay. <laughs> nice. Your mother won't stop asking me why I look so tired. Why do you look so tired? They look so cute together. Shut up. You think they look tired? Go to hell. <laughs> Okay, so first and foremost, super inappropriate to be joking about a patient outside their room like that and to discuss something like that in such a kind of crude fashion. This guy truly is suffering and he should not be a sideshow for residents to kind of joke about behind that patient's back. So just a little backstory, April and Jackson are hooking up, as well as Richard and Catherine Avery, and neither of them know, and Jackson and Catherine are mother and son. And so a really interesting dynamic that goes on in the episode. Of course, they have to add drama to it because it's Grey's Anatomy. But overall, I will tell you that if you are suffering from a genital problem, be reassured that we don't joke about these things behind your back. We take it very, very seriously and we want to help you. We need to identify the testicles and the cords. Don't want to damage them. Yes, ma'am. I'll keep my eyes peeled. I'm having the best time. <laughs> Forceps? Just with the face. I'm not making a face. I've spent a few thousand hours looking at you with a mask on. I know when you're making a face. Bailey, I'm not making a face. Just so you know, I did not bully April Kepner into giving up the surgery. She approached me, so nuts to her. <laughs> Get it? Nuts to her? <laughs> oh, come on. You get it. I'm a urologist, Dr. Bailey. Of course I get it. <laughs> hey, I spend most of my day in the bowel. Doesn't mean I don't laugh or fart. Tough room. Ooh, the tension in that OR. <laughs> this operating room is not a typical operating room in the sense that there are two general surgeons operating with the urologist. Very typically, it is just a urologist with whoever their assistant is, whether that's a resident, in this case would probably be a resident or a fellow, and there may be a plastic surgeon available as well to help if you need a skin graft. Sometimes the skin is so poorly debilitated after having this sort of problem that you actually need to graft some of skin onto that area to help it heal appropriately. This guy has scrotal lymphedema, which they do kind of allude to in the episode. And scrotal lymphedema, like I said, most commonly is due to radiation, previous surgery, or sometimes we just don't have a cause for it. A lot of times these guys are bounced around from urologist to urologist getting antibiotics or just being told to lose weight and that will help, but it doesn't typically help. Typically you need to have surgery in order to remove the excess tissue and sometimes you could even do microsurgical repair to get the lymphatic vessels back together to help the drainage as well. So why does scrotal lymphedema happen? Well, it's because there is a problem with your lymphatic system and your lymphatic system is a bunch of vessels that are throughout your entire body that function to help 
take some of this excess fluid that your body makes and recirculate it back into the body. And when there's a deficiency in that system, you can have what's called lymphedema or swelling. So you'll often find that people who've had surgery that destroys the lymphatic system can develop lymphedema because the surgery has disrupted the ability for the lymphatics to take that fluid out of their body and recirculate it. Also, if you've had radiation, it can cause fibrosis to those lymphatic vessels, which can make it difficult then again to get that fluid reabsorbed. And lastly, in people who are morbidly obese or very overweight, you can have incompetence of the valves in the lymphatic system. So you can imagine that the lymphatic system has to go against gravity because it's taking fluid from all over your body, including your feet, your groin, and all the way back up to your heart. And so it has to work against gravity. So there's valves that help from preventing it from going backwards towards gravity when you need to get it back up. Good news, Brian. Procedure went as planned. Amy Miller's got a lot to look forward to. You know, it's really not about Amy. Paul and I have been friends for so long, I never really know how to say it. It's not, uh, it's none of my business, but I don't think you ought to be ashamed of your feelings. It seems to me we just surgically removed the only thing you had to be embarrassed about. Hey. There's a whole lot less of you under that blanket. <laughs> Would you mind? No, not at all. Hi. Aww. Think we'll get invited to the wedding? Of course, they have to end on a high note. So typically after surgery, there's a about a two week period where they'll have you on some sort of bed rest to allow that area to heal or at least very limited restrictions. And then up to six weeks, no heavy lifting, no strenuous activities. So I think that they always show this rosy picture. Everyone comes out of surgery, like ready, feeling great. And typically, you know, there is a recovery time and there's pain and you don't always feel and look so great right after surgery. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.